Franchise Business Review presents FBR Viewpoints. Visit FranchiseBusinessReview.com for more information on today's top franchise opportunities. Hello, I'm Emma Pearson of Franchise Business Review, and today I'm speaking with Frank Sampson, founder of Senior Care Authority, which specializes in senior placement and elder care consulting. Welcome, Frank. Well, thank you, Emma. Great to... uh... Great to be on. Thank you for your time. Oh, well, I'm thrilled to learn more about your business. I'd love to know how long Senior Care Authority has been franchising and really what you see the future of senior placement and elder care consulting being. Okay, great. Well, we we started franchising uh, the very end of 2014. Um, uh, I started the business itself in 2009, so we operated, uh, we're still operating our own, in a sense, corporate-owned franchise since 2009, um, but we took that five-year period to really test things and make sure everything was uh, working extremely well before we started franchising, so we did the end of 2014. Um, to answer the second part as far as the future of senior placement elder care consulting. Obviously, I believe strongly there's a bright future. You know, just to kind of give you some statistics, which some may have heard this already, but because it's been a lot on the news, but right now, I mean, we're, there's 10,000 baby boomers turning 65 each day for the next 19 years. So that, that's huge. So it's a, it's a huge market. I mean, the, the one statistic that came out from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services really get, kind of gets to me, and that is about 70% of individuals over the age of 65 will require some type of long-term care service during their lifetime. You know, we don't want to believe we're going to need it, but, you know, that mm-hmm. that's the case. And, 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 and what we're trying to really be of help is not only to the senior themselves, uh, but to the family members, the family caregivers, and and I know that, um, you know, Stanford even, you know, Stanford University came out saying that, you know, 40% of Alzheimer's caregivers die from stress-related disorders before the actual family member or patient does. So, you know, oh there's gosh. a lot of stress. Yeah, there's a lot of stress on, on family caregivers, and we're there to try to, you know, not only take care of the senior themselves, but the family caregiver needs to take care of themselves as well. And, um, you know, so we, um, you know, we uh, spend a lot of time with family members to make sure they're taking care of themselves first and foremost. You know, the old, uh, when you go on an airplane and, you know, you have the uh, flight attendant say, you know, when the masks come down, uh, you know, they say, you know, take it yourself before you, hand, you know, hand one to your kids. And we, we kind of look at it the same way. The family caregivers have to take care of themselves um, first and foremost. And um, it's a big issue today. So, um, but, uh, that, that, so we see a, you know, huge, I started the company, as I mentioned, in 2009, when the economy was really tanking, but uh, I started at a difficult time, but it it grew. So, you know, I, I know sometimes people use the term recession proof. I'm not I'm not big on that term. Uh, I don't I don't I don't know if anything is really totally recession proof, but I can tell you this from personal experience is that you know I started the business during a very difficult time and it grew. All right, so you know that that does say a lot. And uh, there's there's a you know uh, a tremendous future just with the the boomers aging. Yes, and isn't it is it or is it true that hospitals and other entities are also really encouraging um, families and 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 um, you know um, seniors to kind of you know go go and um, seek help and you know seek assistance. No, rather than oh, it, sort of oh absolutely. I mean, I, I, I would, yeah, I would say that uh, uh, our franchisees are getting a lot of their referrals coming from hospitals and skilled nursing facilities and other professionals in the industry. Um, you know, that's where a lot of the business does come from because uh, 
you know, if you, if you ask, you know, 10 people what a senior placement agency does, unless they kind of get lucky and guess, most of them don't know. So we're not kind of a known entity. So our, mm-hmm. our time is really spent uh, within the healthcare industry and getting referrals. So yes, uh, that is the case. Uh, there, uh, many of them are, you know, referring us quite often um, because it, it's tough for them to keep up to date on all these locations that are that are opening up across the country and making sure that uh, uh, you know we have to make sure that we know which ones we would like our family, the families we work with, to to visit, uh, and which ones really to stay away from because unfortunately they're not all good. Uh, and so we, that's part of what we do is we really vet them out. Okay. Yeah, which brings me to actually my next question, and that is what you feel makes senior care authority stand out from other service providers in your, your marketplace, including you know, vetting the various um, locations that you do and, and so on. Yeah, I, I mean – you know, just like anything, you know, we're a specialist. I mean, uh, when you say uh, senior care in the, in the franchise industry, many people think of in-home care. And, and certainly I have uh, hold in high regard those that are in the in-home care business, but that's not what we do. You know, we specialize, you know, in, in placement. We know the places inside and out. Um, and... Uh, you know, and that that's really the the huge value that you know we're bringing to families. Uh, certainly, uh, you mentioned the elder care consulting, uh, and that's something that we do because you know not everybody is ready for moving into assisted living or memory care, which is our primary business, and we certainly don't want to push people that way if they're not ready for it. Maybe, maybe getting in home care or bringing, you know, having a caregiver. Maybe it's spending uh, some more time with the family to make sure all the siblings are in agreement. You know, quite often mm-hmm. you've got the daughter who thinks uh, mom should uh, uh, go into memory care or assisted living and the other daughter uh, thinks it should be in home care and the son is in denial and uh, mm-hmm. doesn't think there's anything wrong with mom. So sometimes it's just spending time with the family and working through things and making sure that, you know, they have things in order, all right? And, and that's all part of the elder care consulting as well. So um, that that's what's kind of nice. Placement, we don't charge anything to our families because we are getting paid just like a real estate agent gets paid, gets paid a commission, uh, and many other types of agents in, in other industries work the same way. So we make that very clear to the family. But on the elder care consulting side, um, uh, we do charge our, you know, for that to the family. We make it very clear up front, you know, what we do charge for and what we don't. And, and certainly mm-hmm. it's their option to utilize uh, us for those services. So that is quite, quite unique uh, in the industry. Mm-hmm. Well, it definitely uh, would be have been worth it to one of my my neighbors and and several people that I know who have really dealt with exactly what you described. You know, a group yeah. of siblings mm-hmm. who are just not agreeing, and it it creates so much friction. So it's phenomenal that you're you're easing this really painful experience uh, on behalf yeah. of. Of children and and of course ultimately with the end goal of getting tremendous care you know, for for their loved ones. Um, right, and and, sure that- and we want you know we, what I was going to say. Sorry to inter- interrupt, Emma, but what we also oh, want is our franchisees. That's where we want them to spend their time, you know, and 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 not only going out and building relationships in the healthcare industry to generate those, you know, referrals, but to work with the family. So that's where we want them to spend their time, and that's why we uh, have put together a lot of uh, a lot of great, you know, resources, technology, marketing to assist the franchisees so they don't have, you know, it's, it's kind of 
you know, again, overused term, but, you know, more of a turnkey operation. So we've built, Mm -hmm. you know, we have a CRM program that they could use, a whole social media platform, online lead generation, online newsletters. We built their website out uh, for them. So there's a lot of things that we do so they could really hit the ground running when they start. So it seems to me that you would have to be a fairly special type of person to become one of your franchisees. What do you typically look for um, when you're considering uh, someone as a franchisee? Well, first and foremost, it's got to be somebody who, um, you know, wants to be in their own business, you know, and has the you know the ability to be in their own in their own business you know it's uh so we want to make sure that somebody's ready for that okay um uh, certainly a self starter somebody who could really you know uh even though we we certainly spend a lot of time in working with the franchisees to help uh you know uh get you know get them going off to a fast start they should really be kind of self motivated we shouldn't have to mm-hmm. kick them in the pants all right um <laughs> the other thing is really a uh, uh somebody who is a strong networker all right and likes going out and building relationships um uh, as i say that's an important part of this if they don't enjoy doing that then you know or they are not willing to hire somebody within their organization to do that, uh, then it's probably not for them, you know, because you, that, that is, as I say, there's a lot that we do to try to help them build their business, but but they have, uh, you know, that's why we have local operations because they're they're out building those those relationships, and certainly they have to have a passion to work with the elderly and to work with the adult children and, and know that they're going to be dealing with people who are highly stressed, all right? I've had grown men crying on my shoulders, all right? Uh, you're dealing with adult adult children in their 50s and 60s who are now confronted with, with an issue with their loved one, uh, whether it be a parent, a spouse, um, uh, that they've never had to deal with before. And they could be professionals, they could be professors, they could be uh, very bright people, and they don't know what to do, and they don't know where mm-hmm. to turn. And that, and so it's got to be somebody strong to be able to, you know, handle that type of a, a situation. All right. So that's that's kind of what we what we look for. All right. So so for somebody who's going into this um, industry, you mentioned all kinds of wonderful you know, support that you provide your franchisees with. But for a new a new franchisee, do they get a, a special type of training or, or more almost like I don't want to say hand holding, but you know, maybe extra assistance? Well, uh, they, you know, aside from our, you know, training program, which is over fifty hours of training and our uh, coaching uh, that we do, you know, on the phone, and then that goes on for a few months. So in addition to that, um, yes, I mean, I personally, I just, I'm very hands-on on this business, and I personally go out uh, after they've completed uh, their training program uh, and go out and spend uh, at least three to four days on the road with the franchisees going out and visiting uh, several of the assisted living and memory care locations in their area. So they could understand better, even though we uh, provided this, uh, them this information uh, in our training program, uh, being trained and actually going out and doing it, you know, that's a whole different thing. And we we just, the first time they step foot as a representative of the senior care authority in an assisted living location, we want to be with them, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, we have found that to really help them get off to a much faster start. Certainly, we have some contracts already set on a national basis that are quite helpful for them, but, you know, that part's important. And then, you know, we're also going to be, uh, um, actually soon, we're just, we hadn't been doing this, but there's been a request, and, and we're going to be offering uh, to uh, go out again with the franchisee kind of after they've started to uh, 
get enough uh, uh, gone out and visit the locations to actually go out and network with them as well. As I say, building relationships on the market are important. So going out and uh, with them uh, to to help them uh, in establishing some of those relationships is also something that, that we're doing, which is quite unique. And also speaking of, of unique things you're doing, uh, when I was looking through your website, I, I saw that you have authored a lot of articles and even, you know, a book um, relating mm-hmm. to this business. Uh, so to me, it seems like your franchisees would get almost a, – a, and their clients would get a whole – almost elevated level of knowledge. Can you tell me a little bit about about what you do in that regard? Well, you know, to me, educating our franchisees and educating our clients are extremely important. And uh, it's a reason why, you know, in 2010, I started to do a local radio show uh, that uh, has since also added a podcast. And I do you know, one or two interviews a, a week <clears throat> of interviewing professionals in the industry. Many of those people I interview are actually referrals from our franchisees who are looking to build relationships with those very same people in their local market. Mm-hmm. So uh, the book came out of uh, doing a lot of those uh, interviews, uh, getting requests going, hey, I'd like to uh, kind of read your interviews. I, I like listening, but I like to also read them, and it kind of gave me the idea to put the book together, which is a compilation of, of many, you know, some of the interviews that that I've done with professionals in the industry. Uh, and certainly I, you know, written a lot of articles. We share that with our franchisees. Our franchisees are becoming knowledgeable enough that they're writing some of their own articles, you know, and you know, it's just so important to educate, as I say, uh, families that we're working with because, again, they're, it's not like going out and buying a home or renting an apartment or something. You know, people have done that throughout their lives. Uh, when mm-hmm. they're confronted with a situation like this, uh, it's usually the first time that they've ever done it. And all of a sudden, uh, and it's not something that, you know, Hey, honey, uh, Sunday, let's just go take a look at some assisted living facilities in case we ever need it in the future. People don't do that, all right? So they're now confronted with a situation that they've never had to deal with. So it's important that we're ready to help educate them. And uh, the book was written just to do that, um, and uh, all of our franchisees have uh, many copies of those books that they share with their clients as well. So we're just a big believer in that. So what do you hear your franchisees say that they most enjoy about your business? That's easy. Uh, You know, it's basically the ability and one of the reasons I got into the business, and they feel the same way, that you really uh, are able to help families uh, and really at the end of the day feel real good about what you've done, all right? And at the same time, you can make a living. And build a build a business uh, that you know maybe you want to uh, turn over to your kids in the future, possibly sell in the future when you're when you're ready. But so you're building a business that's going to have equity, um, and at the same time you're making good living and and really giving back and and helping families uh, uh, in situations uh, that you know. I I'll give you an example. I mean I get. And this has happened to me quite often, whether it be a letter, whether it be an email or a phone call. But it's happened where I've gotten calls from uh, adult children who I may have helped, you know, years previously. And uh, they reintroduce themselves because maybe I haven't talked to them in a while, uh, letting them know that their father passed away. But they were calling to thank me, you know, that uh, I helped them a few years back and, and uh, certainly helped uh, relieve a lot of the stress on the family, find a place that was comfortable for their dad to live the rest of his life. And uh, they were calling to thank me for that. And, you know, you, you can't put words to that or dollars on that. So I, I think many of our franchisees feel the same, that, you know, this is a business that is really very people-oriented. It's uh, – and uh, – 
and you also people uh, in the industry in our industry when they go to networking meetings and they meet others it's really not a really a cutthroat type business like many, many other businesses mm-hmm. everybody's in it uh, for uh, good reason it's usually to really help people obviously people have to pay their bills and, and they want to make a living and that's what's nice about this this type of business well, from what your your experience and you know what your franchisees say, and and the fact that um, you've ranked uh, or the senior care authority rather has ranked high enough for it to make franchise business reviews top franchises list, you know it's really clear that you're committed to your franchisees' success, which is fantastic. Um, you know, not all franchises sadly are. So I, I really appreciate your telling us about Senior Care Authority, uh, and I know you're super busy, so thank you for doing so.